Hey guys, welcome back. This is Lucid, and we are jumping back into our game, Lemuria. And, uh, first of all, I want to announce that I have been cured from whatever illness plagues me. Uh, last time you heard me recording, I was probably a tiny bit under the weather, still coughing. I don't think I've coughed very much today at all, so... Feeling good, man. Feels good to be alive. So, um, this first message you see at the top, 25 death gems from Midgard. This is not a death basket. I sent him 265 gold. That was 25 gems, or 25 gold per death gem. Um, he has actually, so Midgard, who I think is right over here, uh, he got attacked by basically all of his neighbors. And he said that in, the, in such situations, uh, he gets to make a decision about who is going to get the spoils and who is going to kill everybody, or who he's going to kill. And he decided to kill Atlantis. This had... This, there's no uh, influence from me there. Well, that's certainly fine. Atlantis is like my worst matchup. Um, so anyway, but uh, he apparently decided... He apparently killed a very large swath of Atlantis' stuff. Uh, which again, very nice. Uh, but needs more money. He's got a lot of forts, but not a lot of money. And... Uh, anyway, so I sent him 625 gold, and in response, he sent me 25 death gems, which is oh so nice because, um, yeah, conjuration rituals are cheaper this month. Again. So, uh, that means that we get another Grand Lemur, uh, here at home. Uh, we named the Grand Lemur we got this time, uh, Sackinet. <coughs> okay, I lied about not coughing. Uh, we named the Grand Lemur we got this turn, Sackinet. And uh, he's moving out here to Sight Search, um, and we're getting another Grand Lemur. I need to get all this Sight Search for death, basically, as soon as I possibly freaking can. So, uh, yeah, that's basically what's going to be happening. Um, yeah, uh, we found two magic sites. Off my porch, finally earning his paycheck, he has found a Temple of Darkness. Which, aside from just having a really cool name, I'm very glad there's a Temple of Darkness in my territory. Uh, it allows us to enter and to get a Shade and a Shadow Warrior. Now, Shades are actually very special because they do armor negating damage. Um, and it also causes additional weakness, which means it's a permanent strength debuff. Very, very good to send these against Pretenders and the like. Uh, pretty good anti-thug units. Uh, you do not want to send a thug or something like a thug into an army full of shades. Um, if we look at the value of a shade, you can get shades here, which... Shades are a very worthy death summon, I'll just say. Um, yeah, you get five for eight death gems. So <coughs> Damn it, I start recording and I start coughing. Um, yeah, you get five for eight death gems. So, the... The value is like 1.5 per um, per dude, um, and we are going to get them for free. So anyway, you can think of this like a death 2.5 site, except when you're Lemuria, you have better things to put your death gems into. Uh, nevertheless, very cool. We can definitely use shades. Um, and then we also got a tar pit, which is just a fire one site. So battles, let's see what we've got. Here we are rolling up, there's nothing here. And then here we have Bogarus attacking. The once proud armies which valiantly strode into our land. You can tell that their morale has, uh, has crumbled a bit. They're not quite as confident as they have been. We've got these guys in the back to deal with uh, a flanking attack. They're successful. I think they might have zapped one of their own Maliadrazina. No, they didn't. Not enough to kill them anyway. Uh, and we take two provinces here and here that uh, had no PD in it. One was from Flegger, one was from Bogarus. You always want at least one PD so you can tell what's there. Um, and then there's a chance it'll cause friendly fire or something with one PD. Here we have Flegra moving on top of uh, his last, not last, second to last fort. Um, he knew he can't defend his capital, he just doesn't have what it takes. So instead he's going to go liberate his fort. 
I was thinking, if you recall, uh, on top of this fort here, I was thinking there would, his god, so his god is in here, uh, the great white bull, which I had deduced, but uh, I was thinking his god was going to bust out, and I was hoping that this, uh, there's a big Marinese army here, and I was hoping that army would come over here and run into their god or bump into Flegra otherwise. But these guys are, I don't know if they're coordinating or not. I don't think so, because Flegra took this from Marignan. So I don't think Flegra is super happy about Marignan backstabbing him. Um, so that was here. Here, Bogarus is attacking me. This is his big army. Uh, let's see, he's got this alchemist. Okay, so he is set up to do flaming arrows. Yeah, this is quite the army. He's got four... No, five of these guys. Holy two. He's got five holy threes. So a total of ten high-level pre... No, this guy too. So... Yeah, that is a lot of priests. These guys can kill a lot of ghosts. Okay. Let's see how many slaves he's got. Six slaves. How many masters? One. This guy's a master. Two. Three. Four. <clears throat> okay, it looks like four masters, six slaves, so that will probably go for a long time. Um, the <coughs> okay, wait, slave, slave, slave. Okay, all the master of names are slaves. This guy is going to be doing uh, off path stuff, but presumably he'll do summon earth power, which will also be nice. But mainly going to be dropping flaming arrows. So anyway, that's something we're going to have to be careful about. My guess is he's sending this army to try to liberate Flegro. Or like, to get me off his cap before I get it and maybe take it himself. And it's possible, this could kill a pretty big army, like this would murder a hundred ghosts. 200 ghosts it would kill, 700 ghosts I think it would still lose to, but it would be very, very, very painful for me. I mean, the amount of punishment these guys can dish out is pretty extreme. Now, uh, I unfortunately have a few archers here, uh, or at least a little bit. <laughs> Thunderstrike's just lighting these guys up. Archers are like, get out of here! Run! Will they escape? And they're just dodging on the lightning bolts. Yep, they make it up. Uh, which actually is nice. They may have retreated. <clears throat> yeah. Those two uh, two archers may live to tell uh, another tale. This actually, looking at it, it's a little light on a front line. Twenty nine is not quite enough. But you need, you don't want to be, <coughs> you don't want too much, like you, you want a heavy, like, the good thing about this is it's a very high mage to troop ratio. The bad thing about this is there's not a lot of troops. So you really want more troops in this because like you want a high ratio, but you need probably at least 60 front line. Because you need to mostly be able to block me from flanking, and ideally you have people on bodyguard duty too. Because what's going to happen is my ghosts are going to flank and try to get at his uh, his mages, and while it's absolutely the right decision, we'll look at this formation again. To bring this much mage support when you're fighting Lemuria. Um, and at some point you have like limited resources, so it's how do you invest it. Front line forms. Um, did he do power of the spheres on his? Oh, he didn't do earth power. Who would have thought he would have done? Maybe he does it this time. No, strength giants. How is he? How close is he getting? Oh man, these guys are almost taking. Oh no, they're only half. 
But if he does Flaming Arrows, that's going to put a fair amount of fatigue in the system. Anyway, just saying. What is this guy doing? Did he have Blood Slaves? I don't know why he brought this guy. It could be just to... Um, to do a Fatigue Reset, but I don't see any Blood Slaves. So he could do Reinvigoration, keep this Communion going strong. The thing you have to imagine, though... And let's go back and watch it one more time. The thing you have to imagine is I'm going to have guys, they're going to be, here's my deployment box. I know, I guess it's a little farther back, like right here, I think is where it is. These guys are at the back of the box. I don't think this is the middle. Zoom out. Maybe this is the middle. No, look how much space is, is that much space? I think this is the back. I think my deployment box is like this. So what you have to imagine is ghosts literally going from here to here, and then ghosts going from here to here, and then ghosts going from here to here, and then ghosts going from here to here. Like, four sparse lines. And they're all running back. Whew. It's gonna need a lot. I think I need like 400. 400 would kill this. 300 probably would, but I'd take just phenomenal losses. Uh, or potentially one console. Uh, to deal with this with a console, we're going to need uh, shock resistance. So anyway, that's coming in. And then we got to take the throne. And all the commanders are gone, so he just sits here and kind of buffs up. And they disappear. Okay. Um... For events, we get plus five province income. Sweet. Uh, we get uh, some gems, including Earth, which we're getting pretty close to that critical threshold where I can empower my god. And then he can site search Earth better and make Earth boots and other things. Um, conjuration rituals are cheaper. And then we have some fortress thingies completing. So. Um, that is basically it for the turn. I thought about uh, not recording this one until I have my next turn, uh, but I kind of like talking through it with you guys. Um, so I'm going to use this opportunity to rubber duck. And uh, I've got some devious plans. There's a few things that did not happen this turn. One of the things that did not happen is I had this guy camping out. He, nobody tried to break me off. And nobody moved to block these things. So uh, I don't know if he's thinking I won't raid or if he's thinking... I don't know what he's thinking, but... Anyway, we're going to leave one ghost behind just to keep it trapped, and then we'll come over here and just knock this out. Um, now, uh, we also have cracked uh, Flegger's cap, so we're going to be storming it. So we'll talk about that real quick. I've got a few guys hanging out on the outside, and then we're just sending everybody in. Unholy Blessing, uh, Pendragon, our prophet, is going to be doing Power of the Shade Lands, uh, and then Protection of the Shade Lands. Uh, and then they're all going to march in. We've got a few archers here who are going to be on fire. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, Sir Toma is going to be charging into Marignan. Marignan has cracked this fort. Um, and you may say, Lucid, you're already at war with Bogarus. You've just finished this war with Felegra. Don't you want to take a breather and kind of fort this area up and not piss off every single one of your neighbors? And to you, I would say, uh, I haven't pissed off Agartha, and I haven't pissed off Pythium, and I haven't pissed off Satis, um, and Arco, we're not at peace, but uh, he's got his hands full, as we can see down here. So, yeah. Uh, I sent Marignan a uh, message in Discord and said, hey man, uh, how, are, are you interested in a nap? That was all I said. I didn't try to sell him on it and say we should do it. I just want to know if he's interested. And uh, he said, well, probably not. I need more time to think about it. Um, I probably should, like, join a coalition against you or something. And I was like, oh, okay. So, yoink, we're not going to let him have this. There's a bunch of crossbowmen, halberdiers, uh, palace guards, meteorite guards. Do we give it? Does Sir Toma look like he gives a fuck 
about any of them? Correct answer is no. Sertoma gives zero fucks. Um, he's got 23 protection. He's ethereal, so he's going to dodge most of the crossbow shenanigans. Flaming arrows, 10 fire resistance, we don't care about that. Sh uh, shield of Valor, so we get air shield, and we have a shield. So, like, layers of protection to go through for archers. First of all, flaming arrows gets ignored. Right? Just straight off the bat, so forget about that. Get that out of your head. Next up, uh, first has to go through uh, air shield. So you're like, oh my god. Lucid, you're sending a thug into 200 crossbowmen, which is probably not quite that many. It's probably like 180 crossbowmen. You know, oh my god, 180 crossbowmen. Well, automatically, we're going to turn that 180. We're going to divide it by 5, and that's effectively how many it is. So it's more like, you know, like 35 crossbowmen. Um, so, okay, 35 crossbows. Some of them are going to miss. So let's say it gets reduced to like 25 hits a turn. And now a lot of those have to go through the shield check. And I forget exactly how this works, but 8 parry on a shield is pretty high, and 21 protection on a shield is pretty high. So a lot of them are going to get reduced by the shield of valor. Like, not the air shield part, but the actual shield part to nothing. Uh, and that will be a very significant portion. Let's say another two-thirds of them. So now it's like, uh, we were at 25 before, so now it's at, um, I don't know, we'll say like six. So now we get six hits that are going to go past the shield, they're going to go past air shield. Um, they're going to actually hit us. But now they have to go through protection. My protection's 23. Right, these crossbows are going to be hitting for like 11. But it's going to be going against 40% of my protection. Uh, and then 40% of my protection is uh, like 10. So it's going to be 11 versus 10. So, I mean, that actually is still a fair amount of damage, potentially. Yeah, I don't know. It, it could be a little rough. We could lose Sertoma. Um, I don't think we will. I don't think we will. I think I was pretty conservative. I think more shots than that are going to miss. The protection... Yeah. I don't know. Oh. And then it's every other turn, right? So then it's like, how many per turn are we getting hit by? So it's like, let's say it's two damage on average a hit by cro per crossbow, and we're getting hit by, let's say, ten of them. But it's every other turn, right? So it's like five. So now we're pretty close to our HP regen threshold. So an unlucky set of things, like a few bad turns of, of crossbow rolls, we could die. I think it's pretty unlikely. We saw how he did versus these crossbows. It was a, it was a much smaller amount, but there were also fire elementals and stuff mixed in. I think sertoma has got it. We're going to roll the dice. You know, if it didn't work, it didn't work. But we can probably barter for another uh, uh, elemental armor. Um, <coughs> so we'll send these guys in. Highly unlikely, I think, they kill them. That's just my intuition. I mean, the math we kind of worked out where it doesn't seem like they would, but it also they probably could. Maybe, I don't know. Just from the math we did. But I just don't feel like they will. But 180 crossbow is a lot of crossbow. For any thug to deal with. If I were higher in protection, like if I were thir like 30, it would be less important. But I don't know. It'll be a little dicey. I think we got it. What's that? I'm going to pause and figure out what percent the shield's going to block. We're going to go ahead and pull up the DOM manual. Okay, so I've got the formula looked up. And uh, the thing we're going to need from this screen is the parry value, which is 8. So anyway, let's remember that it's 8 parry. We're going to go ahead and go here. Um, okay, so here's the formula. So the attacker, they get DRN uh, plus the size points in the square, in which case we're a size 2 guy, so that's 2. If the square was filled up, this would be 6. 
Um, who gets selected is at random based on the size points. Um, anyway, but I think, anyway. Uh, so there's two size points in the square. So anyway, it's DRN plus two. They don't have magic weapons. Next, uh, for us, for the defender, we get two plus DRN. Uh, so it's basically the same as this. Uh, and then the shield parry value times two. Uh, minus fatigue divided by 20. So if we're high fatigue, it's going to mean we're going to block uh, less frequently. Um, if the attacker rolled is greater than the defenders, then a hit is achieved. Damage is calculated identical to melee combat. Um, yeah. Uh, precision values greater than 10. Count double for the amount of 10 above. I think this is for the precision targeting. Okay, so anyway, that's the formula. So the real question is, what are the odds of a hit? Um, actually, does it say what happens if it's not a hit? Is it just blocked or does it go to shield protection? It looks like it might just be blocked. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, the, the main difference is that we're basically going to have a 16 advantage in the DR enroll which is going to be way higher than I thought, because if we come over here to the DRN table, um, if we've got a 16 advantage, it looks like 99% of stuff's going to be blocked, which I feel like that's too high. <laughs> I feel like that's way too high. Like your chance of hitting a guy with a big shield like that is one in like 1%. So I don't know. I, I feel like that's too high, but we'll find out. Either way, um, yeah, I, I think I, I pro a summary of all that math is I think I did underestimate um, how effective this shield is at blocking projectiles. I think, yeah, I think you're, you put this shield on, you're basically immune to missiles, maybe not the flaming arrow component, but this shield plus this armor, I think you're immune to, to crossbow fire just about, especially if you have regen to deal with the occasional chip damage. Um, <coughs> so anyway, we're pretty certain he's going to stay here. So we're going to go ahead and send some folks in. Uh, and by folks, I mean Sir Toma. Now, the real question is, what is Bogaroos going to do with these armies? My thinking, childishly, is that he will push forward to take... He has basically a few options. One is he could say... Well, I'm going to, Flegra is basically done, he could be talking with Flegra, and Flegra is going to do some heroic march out to reclaim his cap, which he knows won't work, but anyway, that would leave this fort open for Bogarus to take, and they've been longtime allies, so that is, I think, a very probable move, and he moves this here to take this, he'll have to sit on top of it dangerously for a few turns, because, you know, we all know what I can do if, uh, given, given a moment, um, and I've got a thousand troops in the area, just about. Um, which is plenty enough to smite this. Especially with Unholy Power, because my guys... You remember, they don't have a big front line. So with Unholy Power, they're faster. And they'll get around the flanks pretty quickly and start killing these dudes. Which means they're not going to be killing me. Um, but I have also snuck these guys in the back line. This army was here last turn. So these guys have snuck into the back, and we're going to be going and dropping on top of their fort here, which I don't think he can defend. And then here, uh, his snake is up here. This is where the earth snake is this turn. So the earth snake, seeing these guys are going to be here causing problems, is probably going to move south here. Um, Agartha has also informed me that he's got an army here, which I think it's going to be moving here this turn or maybe here next turn, and then attacking the turn after. So we're just going to be doing this to lock down fort production. What I think he's going to do, and this is going to be a much bigger army, like 300. Um, 
what I think Bogarus is going to do is he's he's going to be forced to move these guys up this way and attack here because I've I'm now broken through his flank and he can't afford to have me raiding five ways till Sunday um but this army I think I think this is the most likely move this army moves here and this army moves here if he has uh, delusions of grandeur, he may march this army south and be like, oh, I'm going to come take Felegra. That would be delusions of grandeur. Because uh, there's just no way that's going to happen. I mean, this is, very, this is a very scary army for Lemuria to fight. Let me be clear. But it's missing some front line uh, and bodyguards. <coughs> is, I wonder, is he setting up to do anti-magic? Because that's the other thing that helps a lot. Um, kind of just need to clip through all these guys, make sure any of the masters don't have. I think there's a master somewhere over here. I haven't seen any astral pearls. I don't know what this guy's doing. Let's just bless him. Yeah, strange stuff. Again, nobody's on advancing cast spells that I can tell. So, yeah. Uh, what we are going to do... I, I think the odds of this army staying still are very small. Uh, but if we run into them, we're going to run into them very, very hard with, uh, with these guys right here. And, yeah, we're basically going to have a bunch of these guys on... <coughs> our biggest one right here, uh, 114, our biggest squad. <coughs> the coughing man uh, sparse line attack rear have these guys skirmish formation attack rear these guys fire closest uh, actually I think fire archer is probably a little better here um, wait, can you make it where the hell are you going wait he's going on top of flagger yeah these guys aren't going to make it it's just these three idiots so yeah um, attack rear, fire closest, these guys are on attack rear. Basically this is also a sparse line, for two sparse line formations back to back, attack rear, getting that uh, that flanking out. Uh, Private Plumpkit is going to be doing protection of the Shadelands, uh, and otherwise not exactly closing in with the enemy. I think it's actually probably better to have him farther back. We're not... Private Plumpkit is not going to be uh, engaging. Yeah. Now we will only make contact here if uh, he stays still. So, like, the worst move for me would be if he took these armies and combined them here. If he does that, then this army is going to run into the, a doom stack, basically. Because this army has a lot more front line. Uh, it's got the Maldrazina, it's got uh, 45 voice spearmen and 7 Peshti spearmen. So, a lot of front line units. If, he, if these armies combine, I'm going to be in trouble. But I think him combining in this direction would be a bit odd. If anything, if they combine, I would think they would combine here. Uh, but if they combine over here, it means he's really going to leave this flank exposed. But it would be very bad for me. Uh, because it means this army is going to get basically killed to a man. I mean, this army combined would murder this. And just moments. It wouldn't even be funny. Um, but assuming he moves forward to here or here, or that he combines over here, well, uh, we'll be in an okay situation. Uh, and that will be because uh, we are now between his army and his capital. And so we can haul ass back here get on top of his capital, get on top of his other forts, start raiding all over the place, and just causing economic chaos. Now, I thought about, since Felegra's fallen, uh, making peace with Bogarus, but I think there's more money in it for me if I don't make peace. I think peace is not necessarily in my best interest. Peace, peace is going to give people time to organize and prepare and come at me all at the same time. And I don't really want that. I want more of like chaos and shit show and come at me with what you got 
rather than careful coordination among neighbors. Um, so anyway, we're going to try to get behind their back line. Now we've still got all these guys here, which is about 500 ghosts here, which is enough to probably deal with this army, but not enough to deal with these armies if they combine. But if they combine, I potentially can kit up a console to deal with them. Um, now the throne we got was the throne of fire. That's right, boys. That means we get these fire three add-ups of um, whatever you call them. Uh, importantly, they can do flaming arrows for me, uh, which we are already have unlocked. Um, once I get conjuration research, they can do it with just a fire in a jar and do it every single time. And then I get flaming arrow javelins, which, I mean, that's cool. Um, what else can they do? I mean, they'll be able to do fire stuff up here. Um, our priorities, going at, going to enchantment 6 isn't going to give us much. Well, I guess we get heat from hell, which is a good option if we're invading uh, hot lands. Uh, but my guys don't have heat resistance ourselves. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe not. It's a good, it's a good tool to have, I think, available. Uh, then we're going to go construction. Uh, construction, we get pearls and things like that. Burning pearls, which are okay. And the fire armor is nice. And then, uh, alteration. Yeah, not going to have too much for us. We're going to go probably all the way up to, to alt 5 or 6 to get uh, Soul Vortex and Invulnerability. For our Grand Lemurs, that would probably be our, one of our early stops. Um, the other thing we'll get, but we once we get Alt-5, we can do Solar Eclipse, but this will be with our Adepts. But we're also, these guys can do Incinerate, potentially, which is pretty good. So anyway, there's definitely combat uses for these guys in our short run, but most importantly, they're going to be Researchers, and we get uh, three Fire Gems, and we get plus three Attack which is significant on our consoles because they definitely are capable of being uh, repel thugs. Um, we haven't really been using them. I mean, the, we had the pikes on a few of them where they were repelling stuff, but um, yeah, stuff can be even crazier than that for sure. Uh, the plus three attack and we start throwing a burning pearl on these guys and then they get the four bonus from unholy power. They can give very high numbers. Very, very high numbers for repel. Um, they kind of still want a vine shield, though. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, importantly, because this is cold, uh, and it's Bogarus's dominion, I think. Yeah, this is Bogarus's dominion. This is Phlegra's dominion. That doesn't say which one. But I think this is Phlegra's. I think this is Bogarus. And it probably is soon to be mine, because we're claiming the throne here with Imperialists. Um, but these are mountain passes, and because it's cold, he can't actually move his army from here to here. So this army, while I'd be a little worried about him coming to get it, uh, I don't actually need to be that worried. So we can go ahead and claim it. Also, there's a great silver mine here, so plus 60 gold. Very nice. Super stoked about that. I want to get this area forted up as soon as I can, but I can't fort this and this, which are the two provinces I want to fort most next. These three provinces I really want to fort right here. But none of them are forted, nor will they be forted until I get this Bogarus situation for, uh, figured out. So either I can kill these armies, or I can put so much pressure on their homeland that they have to turn around. And I'll probably do a combination. Um, other things, uh, we have Valik, and for those of you who forgot, Valik has Heroic Quickness, which is one of the best traits for a console to get. We have equipped Valik with, uh, with Copper Plate, a Charcoal Shield, and an Enchanted Sword, and he is going to run up here. And that is because I think the most likely move for this army, though this army could make many, many different moves, um, is to come here and say, okay, fine, I'm going to chase you around through the back, through my heartlands and prevent more people from coming in. So I think he's going to move here. If he does, uh, Valik is going to be waiting for him. Uh, he's going to be basically immune to Thunderstrike. Mostly immune. And uh, immune to Flaming Arrows, mostly. Not immune to Flaming Arrows. Flaming Arrows he'll be resistant to. Um... And, uh, yeah, he'll just be basically a huge badass. 
So I think Valik can kill this whole army if he moves up. So that's trap one. Trap number two is I know his Earth Snake is going to be moving south. Probably here or here. Um, and I'll have a guy here to see it. And then if... Basically, or we'll be on top of this fort too. So I'll be able to see if an Earth Snake's here. If he comes to kick me off with his Earth Snake on top of here... Oh boy, is he going to be in trouble. Because we have also snuck... Uh, and I didn't want to reveal it. But I have snuck a heart rot with a uh, dusk dagger into the tile which Valik is headed towards. And you may ask yourself, well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is if Valik sends his snake uh, to come kick me off of this fort, we're going to... Ha not if, Valik. if the earth snake comes to kick, Val to kick this army off of this fort, then I can send Valik to replace the army, and Valik will have a Dusk Dagger. And with the Dusk Dagger, he can kill the, uh, the Earth Snake reasonably easily. It won't even be funny. He'll just... So, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing is... I can go probably lock down his cap with... Valik is going to be very, very hard to deal with. And I kind of want to deal with uh, with Bogarus before they get uh, Soul Slay online. It's one of the reasons I'm not even really considering peace with him. All my neighbor... Okay, who's gonna... Don't have to worry about Soul Slay. Have to worry about Soul Slay. Don't really have to worry about Soul Slay. Don't super have to worry about Soul Slay, though they can do it. I mean, this is like a light communion nation. And then kind of have to worry. I, th I, th I forget what uh, Marignan gets. Okay, Blood Sabbaths, these guys. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they can communion with just Chartmaker, so we know that's an option. Die out. Royal Navigators. These are cap only, though. So, what do I think about all this? I think these guys are like a light soul slay threat, but not a heavy one, but not a weak one. They're like a medium. And then Arco, of course, is a high soul slay threat. So we'll see. Dealing with Pelegra before Tyrants come out, comes out is really nice, because we can deal with Tyrants, but it's just hard. We'll, we'd lose a lot of stuff along the way. Uh, and so anyway, we're cra we're busting through their fort on turn 26, which I don't think your tyrants can spawn this early. So I think we've we've officially uh, beaten the clock, uh, assuming this works. Uh, other sneaky things. Uh, because I think this army is probably going to move, but I don't think it's going to move here, I think it's probably going to move here, or the hyper-aggressive move would be to charge in this way. Um, anyway, pretty safe, I think, to take a Grave Tongue here and send him up to just attack with a small little retinue of guys. Um, anyway, and then hopefully we'll clear this out. One thing I'm a little cognizant of is we have had our income cut off to these provinces here. And as he has multiple armies moving through, it's much more likely he's going to cut off income from a lot of my raiding. And like, if he moves up here, he's going to cut off income. Um, but we've got Valik coming in to prevent that, because uh, we're not going to be having any of that. <coughs> so uh, anyway, we've got that going on. If this army retreats, uh, we've got this scout to Let's have him hide, actually. Um, he's going to start probably throwing construction, as long as this army doesn't move in position to knock him off. And then we'll probably have to commit Valik or someone else, or I'll have to make another kit of gear for somebody who can sit here and guard the throne while we fort it up. Uh, and then hopefully we'll start this next turn. I ideally, I start two forts next turn. Um, yeah, now for diplomacy. Uh, I had told you that I had messaged uh, Midgar, I mean Marignan, and uh, he refused my nap. So uh, I sent him this message. 
With our peace offer smited, the dark omens indicate that your intent is treachery. While the dark gods would be happy to accept the fallen of Marignan into the Brotherhood of Death and share in our plunder, we cannot tolerate those who bear us ill will to gain in the spoils of our war. So we say that as hopefully we knock his ass off this fort. Um, so yeah, the, the way I think about it is like, do I really want a war with Marignan? Not particularly. Am I like super duper scared of a war with Marignan? Not really. Um, but if we're probably going to be at war, I would much rather have this fort and the gems that come from it in my control rather than in Marignan's. Um, so anyway, that's how I think about that. And like saying he probably needs to coalition against me, like okay, fine, but uh, we're not very excited about that. Um, <coughs> if we get both of these provinces, we will probably have this area too also connected back to our, our mainland so we can start drawing income. Uh, our message to Flegra. The dark gods extend you an offer. Give us the remaining lands and subjects and serve forever in the courts of Lemuria as a king among men. You have fought bravely in your new flo and your new form will be glorious as you pass through the soul gate of Lemuria. It's hard for the armies of uh, it's hard for the armies of Flegra to fight the pure spirits that I can't even talk. It's hard for the armies of Flegra to fight the pure spirits of Lemuria without the corruption of the Lace Dragonians. So we applaud you for your bravery in fighting us. Well played, good sir. Angry old man slash rightful Pantocrator off my porch. Okay. Um, so that was basically our good game message to Flegra. And yeah, right now things are looking mighty, mighty, mighty fine. Uh, getting this throne was just, it was just wonderful. Um, I, I was going back today and I was looking at uh, my old Lemuria playthrough and like seeing where I was at turn 26. I did not have this many forts. I did not have this much research. Um, yeah, we're, I also did not have hardly any, uh, level three forts. So I'm more paranoid about getting, that's what you can tell, is that I'm more paranoid about people attacking me in this. So I'm doing higher level forts so that it's a lower, a slower, more painful siege, uh, for anybody attacking me. Uh, yeah, we've almost got this border completely up to level three. Uh, this one is, yeah, one turn away. This one's one turn away. This one's two turns away. Uh, but after that, we'll be basically... I, I'm okay having level two on the inside, but level three on the outside? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's going to be good. I need to get this one forded up too. But we're not going to put a temple here. I've got... One of the other things I kind of did was I took... I consolidated troops on leaders so I can get some of these guys you know, out of here. Uh, so anyway, these guys are going back to do temple construction duty. Uh, I've got to decide when I put the temples down. I can just have them come back and do spirits for the time being. But uh, in reality, I probably, I don't know. We'll see. My rule has been once I have dominion in a province and a fort, I'll build a temple. But these... Uh, I'm pretty long way away from having Dominion there, so I don't know if we'll do a temple early or not. Probably not. I'll probably just camp out with the fort. We'll probably won't do the temple. Um, definitely don't want to do it in Flegra. So yeah, I think like even here, don't want to claim the throne. I don't want to push Dominion into Flegra. I want to get Flegra, get that juicy, juicy, probably like 250 income a turn, something like that. Just go ahead and get that. Patrol down that unrest. Milk that for as long as I can uh, before we finally corrupt it with our dominion. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Uh, I think that's it, folks. Uh, that is all. Those are all the crafty plans that we have. Um, the final final thing is uh, we're forging more copper plates to deal with more of the Thunderstrike spam. Uh, we've got our other Grand Lemur coming up. And uh, I think that is about it. Take care.